What's up, everybody? Jeremy from MTG Headquarters. And MTG Card Market has done it again. They have graciously sent some boxes to support the Sealed Saturday series coming back. So I hope you guys are excited about that. As well as a couple boxes to open. I know a lot of you have purchased them already using the promo code BORN2014. And I will put a link in the description down below. They also have a store in Chicago. Um, that I know they take the promo code like if you actually walk into the store they'll they've been known to honor the promo code there So if you're in the Chicago area check out MTG card market and tell them uh, HQ sent you These guys have been amazing. I mean the dream come true sponsor for the channel So if you need any singles, why not save an extra 10% off and support a channel sponsor? I'm going to open a box of Theros, because why? Well, because why not, I guess, is really the reason. Uh, Theros has been out for quite some time. But why not just, you know, open a boost, an entire booster box of it? Because why the heck not? Let's get right to the Uncommons. We got a Perforos Emissary. Ordeal of Erebos. Dark Betrayal, and a rare Temple of Mystery. Beautiful rare. Love it. Do we have a... Oh, I thought it was a Foil Temple of Malice, but that's not in Born of the Gods, is it? Or, Daryl, it's in Born of the Gods. Temples are, uh, you know, $5 bill right now, I think, for some of them. So I never mind taking them in draft. You can always unload them pretty quickly. Dissolve, Peak Eruption, Witch's Eye, and a rare Fire Drinker Stater. People keep playing this card in draft in the red-black aggro build. It can be difficult to deal with. It was a part of some mono-red strategies, strategies early on. I don't think it's as much as it was at one point. We have Anvil Ra Raptor, Vanquish the Fowl, Spellheart Chimera, and a rare is a Night Howler. This card is awesome play in the black green deck. Oh, and a foil Nykthos! What's up, EDH players? You know where to get a hold of me. Woo! Let's just kick it right off with a foil rare. And a foil rare that is relevant and not a conjured currency. Stone Shock Giant. Player of Heresy. Farika's Mender, and a rare Psychic Intrusion. Five drop. Uh, reveal is her hand. You may choose an online card from it. You may cast that card for as long as it remains exiled. And you may spend mana as though it were any color to cast it. It's kind of a fun combat trick, but it's not really a combat trick that wins you games often. I know every time I say that, somebody starts typing, Well, this one time... You guys know what I mean. Rescue from the Underworld, Perforos Emissary, Sealock Monster, and a rare Celestial Archeon. The white promo rare is still an absolute bomb in limited as a 4-4 flyer with first strike, and then you can also bestow it for seven. I kind of wish it had Vigilance, but, you know, I guess. Why give me a Sarah Angel? I mean, they have a Sarah Angel for that. I mean, Tormented Hero, Horizon Scholar. Favorite hoplite and a rare hundred handed one. It's an absolute bomb in draft. You can win entire drafts based on playing this card. A four drop, three five. When it goes monstrous, it becomes a six eight vigilance that can block 99 creatures. And honestly, the ability to block 99 creatures is rarely as relevant as simply having a six eight with vigilance. That is enough to win in the current meta and limited. Centaur Battlemaster, Thassa's Emissary. Flamecast Wheel and a rare Pixis of Pandemonium. One drop, each player exiles the top card of his or her library, pay seven to tap it, and each player turns face up all the cards he or she owns, exiled with Pixis of Pandemonium, then puts all permanent cards from them onto the battlefield. So I like to think that I've got the uh, Born of the Gods limited scene kind of... I've been playing really well. If you've been watching me on stream at twitch.tv slash mtgheadquarters... 
You've been seeing a lot of wins lately, and it feels good. Ordeal of Helia, Triton Tactics, Insatiable Harpy, and Curse of the Swine. Rapid Baconization. Pay two blue and the one for each creature to turn as many as you want into two two boars. That is relevant in today's current metagame. Or current limited scene. I don't know that it's played in any other formats constructed. Sea God's Revenge, love that card. Coordinate Assault and our rare Temple of Deceit. Blue, black, Scryland. Scrylands are a thing. Every single time, you know, every rotation, those those two color lands are always relevant. Ordeal of Thassa, Nemesis of Mortals, Fanatic of Mogus, and an Erebos, our first mythic. 5-7, 4 drop, indestructible. Uh, as long as it's in play, your opponents can't gain life, and you can pay 2, pay 2 life, and draw a card. It's not that great. And we have a foil, Nalia's Disciple. Love that card in draft. I, I normally don't like to say life gain is a thing, but... With the hyper-aggressive decks that you often see in Limited, even gaining 3 or 5 life, you know, with a Nalia's Disciple, um, can win you the game. I mean, if you've watched my stream, you know that for a fact. Heliot's Emissary, seeing less play than normal. Magma Jet, that's seeing less play. That's a card that's gotten worse with Born of the Gods. Let's fill out Chimera, and a Master of Waves. Back-to-back -back Mythics, folks. 4-drop, 2-1, protection from red. You guys all know this card. Um... They staple in mono blue devotion, and it sucks in draft. Although I played it with some success in draft recently, in a heavy blue deck. Hunt the hunter, destructive robbery. That card's gone up since uh, Born of the Gods. Ordeal of Nile. The ordeals, I think, their stock's gone down a little bit with all the fatties out there. And the hammer of Perforos. Three drop creatures you control have haste. That is relevant. Uh, if you're playing a hyper-aggressive deck in Limited, though, you almost would rather play a creature on turn 3, but um, it's a great card to play in Limited. It really is. Keepseek Gorgon is better, though. <laughs> Hunt the Hunter, Fanatic of Mogus, and our rare Annex and Siamid. It's a great card in Limited. 3-2 First Strike and Vigilance, as well as Heroic. So I hope you guys are enjoying this op uh, opening. And again, I want to thank MTG Card Market, whose link is in the description below, and who you can save 10% from using Born2014. Pretty sure that's the old promo code they gave me. I don't know if they wanted me to give it out or not, but I guess uh, a lot of people have been using it and saving some money. Mogus Marauder, Horizon Scholar, Flame Speaker Adept, and a rare is a Whip of Arabos. Very difficult card to overcome in draft. It's just a P in the A. Um, can make games last forever. Even even if you win, it's going to be one hell of a battle. And a rare... Oh, and we have a foil eyes land. And I've been getting... That's a second foil land. Forget those foil lands. They bring me a foil Elspeth. I thought we were friends, Theros. Uh, Artisan Sorrow, that's gotten better with uh, Born of the Gods. Thassa's Emissary, Coordinated Assault, and our rare Arbor Colossus. This is a card that's also gotten better. For a 5 drop for a 6 6 with Reach, is extremely relevant, and it going monstrous is um, even better. So, of the possible two or three mythics we might have left, I mean, uh, obviously seeing a Planeswalker would be nice. Phalanx Leader, Ordeal. Prowler's Helm, and a Fleece Main Line. That's a card that really just never went anywhere. I don't know if it's uh, more in different Eternal formats, but people, you know, when I stream, people love to tell me that I should be splashing for Fleece Main Line. It just is not relevant. I mean, not in today's limited scene. I mean, a 3-3, three, three, who cares? A, so it goes monstrous and it's a 4-4. Four, four. hoop de doo It gets outclassed by a Nessian Asp, and that's a common, you know? I mean, Hexproof, I guess, is good, but a 4-4 is not good enough to win the game. Rising Chimera, Flame Speaker Adept, Witch's Eye, and a Bident. We're getting all, we're getting all the legendary artifacts. That's, we have the Bident, the Hammer, and the Whip already. Love that card in draft. Um, 
honestly, just like in just like in regular, you know, real Magic play, drawing cards is still drawing cards is almost always really good. Something I learned kind of the hard way. Ordeal, Cutthroat Maneuver, Decorated Griffin, and a rare's Reaper of the Wilds. Excellent. Four five. Pay a black. It gains Death Touch. Plays one in a green, and it gains Hexproof. It can absolutely take over matches in draft. Um, I actually used to think the card Opportunity sucked in draft. Then I finally realized that drawing cards is relevant, and <laughs> you know that just shows you know how far how my mindset has totally changed. Ordeal of Erebos, Triton Tactics, Sentry of the Underworld, and a rare Steam Augury. Wah wah. Reveal the top five cards in your library and separate them into two piles. Opponent chooses one of those piles, put one pile in your hand, and the other into the graveyard. Just not a good card. You know what? I'll fight you in the street over it, too. People say it's so good, but people get people remember the one situation where a card helped them. They forget like the fact that so many games they lost when they top deck a card. You know, and it just doesn't do anything for them. Triton Fort Fortune Hunter Warriors lesson and a rare. <gasps> I thought these. Yay! Pay one black. They reveal their hand. You may take a card. They discard it. You lose two life. It's a good card for a reason. It's great for getting rid of board, getting board wipes out of people's hands or things you can't deal with. And it's a good idea just to get a look at their hand early on. Burnished Heart. Crown Hoplite. It's not really played in draft, though. Although I've played it a few times. Arena Athlete. And a Perforo, Scott of the Forge. 6-5, indestructible. Every time I... This is probably one of the best gods, I think. Anytime a creature comes... Uh, one of the best gods in Theros. Anytime a creature comes in, they deal... Take two damage, and you can also pump your entire army. It's an absolute bomb and limited. It's played and it's constructed. Doobie, Battlewise, Hoplite, Prowler's Helm. Erebos is an emissary and a rare. Pelucranos! This card has been coming up like so much in draft lately and sealed. Four drop for a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, that's good enough. With monstrosity, when you can pick off some creatures, it's even better. And we have a foil silent artisan. There are worse mythics than Pelucranos. Just for draft or sealed, I'd be really happy to see it. Glare of Heresy. Nemesis of Mortals, Insatiable Harpy, and a rare Rage Blood Shaman. Two, three other Minotaurs you have get 1 1 and Trample, and a Foil Thassa's Emissary. Uh, people love drafting Minotaurs. I don't know why, because the one time you go for it and it works, it's fun, but it's still a, a tough, tough, tough road to hoe. And you can still get beat out. Minotaurs is still not even the best archetype, you know, in draft. Rescue the Underworld, Gainsay, Evangel of Heliod, and a Shipbreaker Kraken. Promo Blue Rare, 6-6. Six, six. When it goes monstrous, you basically just win the game. It becomes a 10-10. You can tap down four other creatures. So, I mean, I like Minotaurs. I mean, I like the for the fun of it, but if you're playing in an 8-4 and you're playing against people who are taking it really seriously, it's a tough deck to try to force. Burnished Heart. Ordeal of Heliod, Evangel of Heliod, and a rare, another Fleecemane line, because why not? Um, yeah, so the whole, like, turn uh, one, like, turn one, um, Tormented Hero, turn two, Death Bellow Raider, turn three, Minotaur Skull Cleaver, turn four, like, that deck can win very often, but if you, if somebody stabilizes, it's just over. Crow and Hoplite. Triton Tactics. I've been blown out by that a few times lately. Century of the Underworld. And a Swan Song. Counter Target Enchantment. Instant or Sorcerer Spell. A controller gets a 2 2 bird. Card is. I, I mean, I, I guess it's played in some formats, but limited. I don't want to be given any one of. I'd rather have a 4 5 creature than a 2 2 bird. Kragma Warcaller. Speaking of Minotaurs. Dissolve. Sea Lock Monster. And a rare Tyramet, Murder King. One black, one red, 2-2. Two, two. It allows you to sacrifice Tyramet and deals two damage to target player. Sacrifice another creature. Check that. Or you can play one in a black and sacrifice a creature to return him to your hand. So thank you, mtgcardmarket.com. Back, you know, promo code BORN2014. 
Thanks for reviving the Sealed Saturday series that people like so much. Chronicler of Heroes, Dark Betrayal, Seder Piper, and our rare Daxos of Melodus. A great card in Limited. Uh, you want to get it when you're already into white, blue, heroic, but um, can be blocked by creatures greater than three, and whenever it deals combat damage, you exile the top card of their library and gain life equal to its mana cost. And you can cast it, right? So it's an absolute bomb. Especially with all the fatties now. Destructive Revelry, Artisan Sorrow, Dauntless Onslaught, and our rare Triad of Fates. Forge out 3-3, you can put a fate counter on something, then ultimately you can exile. You know, I've tried to play it in draft, and it just it mostly plays as just a 3-3 creature. I mean, it can be good with dealing with fatties, that's for sure. Keepsake Gorgon. Erebos Emissary, Vrika's Mender, and a Titan of Eternal Fire. I've seen people play this more now um, in the current meta because there's just so many big-ass creatures. And even though a 5-6 six for 6, you know, this card was, like, hardly ever drafted before. Same with, like, Wild Celebrants or something like that. Nobody drafted that card in Theros. But now in Born of the Gods, we see why it's around people start taking that more so cards like that change their value tormented hero battlewise hoplite shipwreck singer and ember swallower great card and limited uh you know promo rare it's a four five for four which is excellent but then once it goes monstrous it becomes a seven eight and each player sacrifices three lands Centaur Battlemaster, Nylee's Emissary, Favorite Hoplite, and a rare Melodus Charlatan. 2 3 for 3 is actually playable in some scenarios. Um, the His ability is not really that relevant. Very cool looking Rage of Perforo, so. Just four packs left. Hopefully, we can finish with something really cool. I hope you guys are enjoying this opening. And I hope that if you're not already, that you. Take a second to subscribe to the channel. Love to have you. Chronicler of Heroes. Nally's Emissary. Dauntless Onslaught. And a rare... Oh, Nally of God of the Hunt. 6-6 six, six for 4. I have I had some good drafts with her yesterday. Playing two Nally's Presents and like some Nally's Disciples. I surprisingly got her out plenty. Vanquish the Fowl, that's more relevant now. That stock's rising. Karametra's Acolyte, Serenity of Underworld, and a Prophet of Crufix. I will, if I'm in green and or blue, I will splash for that card because that is a blowout. It's almost as powerful, in my opinion, and I might, you know, ruffle some feathers saying this, but it's practically as powerful as a Planeswalker. It's not as powerful as a Planeswalker, but if you got a mitt full of cards, it can be devastating for somebody. It's just over. This card, Wild Celebrants. That used to be the last card picked in Daryl Strauss so so many times. Now people take it more often. Magma Jet, Amber Walt Raptor, Ordeal of Nylia, and a Heliod, God of the Sun. Let's just finish with all the gods. What do we need? Thassa? All right, Thassa, I know you're in here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this opening. I know you're all eagerly anticipating the 50,000 subscribers celebration just like me, so continue to tell your friends. Horizon Chimera, Cutthroat Maneuver, Deck Decorated Griffin, and a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx. That goes good with the Foil Nykthos. And let's go through the rares. So, Nylia, Nykthos, Heliod, Property Crufix, Melodus, Ember Sweller, Try to Face Daxos, Tyramet, Swansong, Fleece Mane, Shipbreaker, Rageblood Shaman, Pelurkanos, Perfro, so that's our fourth mythic. Thought Seize, which is good. They always like to see that. Fleece Mane Lion, Arbor Colossus, Whip, Annex, and Siamede Hammer. Master of Waves, five mythics. Erebos, six mythics. Wow, there's a lot of man, I've been getting a lot of mythics lately. Temple of Deceit, Curse of the Swine, Pixis, Hundred Handed One, Celestial Archon, Psychic Intrusion, Foil Nykthos, Night Howler, Fire Drinker Seder, and a Temple 
of mystery. So very solid for mythics too. I mean, we got a bunch of gods. We got four gods and a master of waves and a pelucranos. Pretty good. You know, no um, Elspeth, but overall, very good box. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. We'll talk to you again real soon. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, check out some of our most popular playlists from MTG vlogs, sick gameplay videos, new product breaks, and some insane vintage openings. I upload three to four new Magic the Gathering videos every week. So if you haven't already, please take a moment to crush that subscribe button to join one of the fastest growing Magic the Gathering channels on YouTube. Talk to you later.